home brothers so vegetarianism I think some people downplay how important it is and many of us are more manly continent strong courageous yogis don't want to look like pussies like hippies manjanas and so this so-called tough exterior we want to say oh meat doesn't matter it's okay and um, my sister is fairly Germanic and she's like yeah eating meat doesn't doesn't matter it just doesn't matter that's what she said so um, I've heard some pretty dumb excuses for it too like um, plants are sentient beings too um, killing plants to eat them is murder I've heard uh, if you don't kill all the cows for me then we'll have too many cows and it'll be anarchy um, I've heard oh you'll die of protein deficiency B12 deficiency these are some of the more asinine arguments I've heard I think we need to focus in on the general truths the general norms of all of history all the way up to now our original Bible our uh, Buddhist scripture Hindu scripture all of our major gurus and so on these are our guides for where the truth should be and we'll begin to piece things together now the number one thing I want to address is because I've heard this a couple times is that plants are such a being so don't eat plants um, <laughs> well the animals eat a lot more plants and eating the animals equals eating several thousand times more plants so in yoga we apply principles to real life and the principle is we want to stop killing as much as possible we want to do things uh, as much as possible in uh, the, the vein of justice so sure we want to eat less plants and the way we do that is by being vegetarian or vegan now the official statistic on that is you eat one hamburger you cut down one tree a good sized tree in the Amazon rainforest 16 of 17 fields in the countryside that you see are used to make grain for animals for meat eaters so imagine you're in the French countryside and you have 17 fields there you could literally put trees and forest on 16 of those fields leave just one of them and then you would have enough space to produce food for your vegetarian community number two major ecological problem is the dumping of waste guts and blood into rivers where does all that stuff go people don't talk about it and ruined air and groundwater so number two and number three here are combined into one uh, I want to ask my sister and everybody else if it's no big deal why don't you want to go live next to a slaughterhouse why don't you want to go live next to a place that produces animals for meat uh, the answer is because you can't dig a well there you can't drink the water there you can't breathe the air the the rivers are polluted I think that is a major problem this is why all of your self-sufficient uh, self-sufficient uh, self temples are vegan because they simply do not have the luxury of polluting their own water and air they uh, create a good environment for themselves they protect their own environment they enjoy the fruits of that labor and of that um, discipline and uh, as we see with brother Nathaniel the the ex-Jewish guy and he lives in in the mountains somewhere in the States as a Orthodox Russian monk 
they eat vegan. That's what they do. People think, well, Christians eat meat. There's no law against eating meat. Well, show me a, a Christian temple that is self-sufficient that eats meat. You know, we're all the same, brothers. That's why we see religion is all the same. Um, I have never heard of a Jewish temple that's self-sufficient. <laughs> you know, so they're, they're, I don't think those guys, you know, Orthodox Jews, I don't think they go off into the mountains and be self-sufficient. No, no, no. So that's why those guys don't, don't follow any rules. They don't live with the consequences of their actions, and so they come up with all of these insane ideas which essentially push off responsibility for their actions, essentially pollution and bad karma onto everyone else. And then number five is being a vegetarian is very easy. Um, we can just be vegetarians. You don't have to be uh, a strict vegan. Um, I think being a vegan in Europe or America would be easy too. But being vegetarian is very easy. And so, so don't give excuses about that. And then number six on my list here is the blood type A, the Euro European blood type that came from vegetarian farmers. And about half of the Europe European population is blood type A. Now, it's not to say that blood type O's were hunter-gatherers. I don't really buy that. O just means no blood type, so it's the most primitive blood type. It doesn't distinguish how you lived or what these humans decided to do with their free wills. I think ancient humans, just as today, uh, exercised their free will in every which direction. But blood type A developed specifically to you know, have a, a very strong body and build off of a strictly vegetarian diet. And notice that the environment in Europe is still basically protected um, and the grass and the trees uh, they're all still there the, that is because you have enough people in Europe that lay off the meat or are completely vegetarian you have enough people doing that that the environment is sufficiently protected and then we look at the type B blood types are coming from the savage, coming from savage Mongolian, that whole group of tribes. You said Genghis Khan had 40 of these tribes. The Khazar tribe is the 13th tribe. Um, of the Jewish populations, 84% of them are blood type B. Another blood type B, which sometimes gets tested as O, is from India. And I would assume blood type B is also pretty big in the Middle East. And Northern Africa, those are blood type O people. But these people are adapted to uh, drinking milk and, and eating meat. And so they started with horse meat and horse milk. And these people have horrible environmental conditions. Um, China is by a third these blood type B. 6% uh, of our population comes from Genghis Khan, just one man. Um, about 80% of the surnames in China come from a practically desert area, the province Shanxi. And China is over 80% desert. Mongolia is pretty much entirely desert. And the Middle East is all desert. And then you have Jews in Israel and Palestine that are planting trees and eating vegetarian meals. And so I'm not sure exactly what kicked it off, but they got kicked on, on. They're on the vegetarian kick now in Israel, and supposedly this this is also part of their planting trees and trying to revive the environment there. Uh, except that they use cutting down trees to oppress Palestinians. So I don't know if there's any actual net 
you know, growth of trees in Israel. Uh, there certainly isn't very much grass there. And that, to me, is something I just couldn't live without. I couldn't live without, you know, seeing some grass. Um, and But, you know, what's doing worse than Israel, of course, if you go around to the Muslim areas. The Muslim areas, Muslims are so crazy about, you know, cutting down all of these animals and slaughtering them. They slaughter uh, goats in the parks. There's a scandal in Italy where Muslims are leaving goat heads in the in the park square, in the city square, um, you know, dumping blood here and there. They slaughter in their basements, and everywhere where there is a significant population of these kinds of people. It's not one race, but it's a group of a type of people that that wander and create uh, deserts and have sort of cheating tendencies and changing their names and moving from here to there to here to there with no s responsibility. We call these nomadic groups um, have typically been a quote-unquote problem in history. And you could call them a problem or you could call them a nemesis because, um, you know, it's like the wolves in the in the, the herd of caribou. You know, unfortunately, us white folks, us Europeans, have gone into weaker states and we fall prey to these kinds of people because, like, we shame each other for having conspiracy theories and shame each other for thinking maybe somebody is cheating us or maybe there's a problem. Um, and so it's also the responsibility of whites and white nations to control their immigration. That brings us up to the next issue, which is immigration. And immigration is um, a major problem that's caused by meat eating. So uh, uh, meat eaters do not want to slaughter their own meat, so they hire people, other people, to slaughter their meat. Now these people are homicidal maniacs. And it's funny, like the Mexicans going into the United States illegally, they said they found that 6 or 7 percent had a record of murdering people. I mean, it's insane. And you don't even need to get into the details. Of the Mexican immigrants going to the U.S., they're a, a huge, a very high violent criminal rate. Mexico does not want these people. They are not stellar examples of Mexicans. The same issue in China, in the area of Tibet. The Tibetans have turned into rabid meat eaters, and they won't slaughter their own meat, so they hire a group of Muslims called the Hui, and they've been moving en masse into Tibetan cities in the current political province of Tibet, but also in traditionally Tibetan areas that are external of that official province, like Kangding, northern Sichuan, and uh, what's that other place, Qinghai, the province to the north. Uh, there are still many Tibetan areas. And the 2008 riots in Tibet were based on this. This is the secret. This is not talked about on the news, but it was a race war between Tibetans and Hui's. And the Tibetans are saying, we hate you, you're horrible, you're violent, you're mean, you steal stuff. And But that's what what we call in Chinese and how I would translate that is you you're not getting along with yourself you're pissing yourself off and that's the same thing with Americans complaining about Mexican immigration you guys are pissing yourselves off because the people giving these guys jobs and providing them with money are the meat eaters and they invite and two million, around two million Mexicans into the U.S. every year, and they say, "Oh, these people are violent. They're criminal. They have criminal tent." Well, of course they do. They can slaughter, you know, 300 cows a day with a chainsaw. You know, would you let that guy live next to you? Would you want your kids to go play with the Uncle Jose next door? 
with the they all have a face like that the slaughtering people the their faces get twisted one inch after the other until when they get older they look like they look like somebody you know rang their rang their face out like a towel of course they look like that and i think we should be ashamed for you know, paying them to do these immoral things uh, and that that's another that would be the seventh and my final point not often talked about problem about meat eating uh, finally I want to close with saying that uh, the China situation is getting much worse they eat seven times more meat than they did in the 70s There's a fam famous book and a study called the China study which compares the health and lifestyles of people who are basically vegetarian with those who are not and with the Chinese being the vegetarians basically vegetarian with a very high uh, vegetable content very low consumption of meat that was the norm in an era when there was no real hospitalization there was no big you know hospital scam going on we need to sell you more medicine more surgery scam you into this and that um, I can definitely confirm Holly the Australian vegan on YouTube who is named Durian Ryder I can confirm what he says basically the meat eating and the hospitalization plus lots of medicine surgery all this it is a scam that goes together absolutely together China had no need for these doctors and medicine and, and surgeries before they, they got onto meat and now they're using it constantly and I think if you check on statistics on the Chinese domestic economy the largest selling things are drugs and the fastest growing sector is the hospital sector I do not buy the idea that modern people in general live longer than ancient people ancient people simply let weaker children die if they couldn't survive and they wouldn't do things like you know so a uh, half a heart together and use like some life support machine and and do all of these crazy things to to bring weak and uh, unfit people into the world you know I think when a cause is lost and somebody is born very very weak and they they can't get along then you know God and nature are saying just let it go it's a sign to you it's it's karmic for that particular life it, it's not our business just like all of these life support machines and these so-called pro-lifers also going out and saying they'll keep you know vegetables alive for you know, 20 years Terry Schiavo this her name is slave so she's a slave to this this machine and people said her husband was horrible for pulling the plug and all of these other things it's insane you know just follow nature follow God and the ancients followed that and what the moderns are doing in their arrogance is saying that for every child that died from being weak and um, for, for every child that died in natural childbirth or every mother that died in probably fairly unnatural childbirth in the cities they're counting all of these deaths and averaging them with the normal regular people um, and then they come up with ridiculous figures saying ancient people lived to only 35 years old or you know 40 years old come on do you really believe that you know no so this is what the China study also shows us is that without all this hospitalization all this so-called modernization there's a lot less cancer a lot less degenerative disease people live happier healthier you know probably in the 70s if you averaged out the lifespan along with babies that they just wouldn't try saving then yeah you would say that the lifespan is lower than today but today people live in a lot more suffering and a lot of kids are suffering uh, throughout their whole lives and they're they're also deteriorating the gene pool you know to be frank as well because people who are saved you know 
that were born very weak and with weak constitutions were then are also then allowed to reproduce and reproduction is just not considered a public thing it's just oh it's you know I do it if I want to so these are the issues that are related to the um, a vegetarian thing and no don't look at a vegetarian and say well you must be a weak person a mangina or whatever you know if we look to the sheiks they're very strong they're a warrior caste they're vegetarian those guys are a lot bigger than me and I'm pretty sure any of those guys could probably kick any of you guys butts too you know so how about the animal kingdom people say oh you're skinny because you're a vegetarian well I've, I've always been skinny but Chinese like to say that to me you're skinny because you're vegetarian it's like, well you know, cows are vegetarian hippopotami are vegetarian elephants are vegetarian rhinoceros are vegetarian I don't know why they call lions the king of the jungle because lions can't attack elephants you know even you know a full full grown uh, bison on the plains of Africa are stronger than the lions the lions can't take any of those guys down you know unless they're in a pack I mean if you have a realistic view of vegetarian animals they're stronger heavier than the carnivores uh, also gorillas <laughs> gorillas are vegetarian and they would I, I don't know what are they ten times stronger than a human so come on if you want to bulk up too you want more in that's your base energy your base chi then you need your, your base of uh, grains in your diet your base of you know fruits and vegetables in your diet and I'm kind of Gandhi in a way I don't want to eat unless I'm really hungry um, I look probably too skinny to be any kind of guru I'm not a guru I'm certainly not qualified to be one uh, Yogananda conscientiously got fat because he felt Americans would think he was weak and, uh, and they wouldn't admire him as a skinny guy like they would in India when I went to India I got a lot of respect they're like you you really you know save you really you're really um, hardcore they, they respect that but in in America they look at somebody who's skinny and they don't think oh he's a yogi who's you know being ascetic and loving God they see a skinny person and they think weakness and and among other problems that that guy really doesn't have um, so also we need to get rid of this idea that vegetarians are skinny they lose weight or that they're necessarily weaker or all of that um, and if you don't mind puking up your lunch you could watch that video on durian riders a meat-eating weightlifter who got 10 pounds of parasitic worms pulled out of his gut by surgeons it's freaking disgusting you know to have rotting flesh in your your guts that has no it has no fiber in it that that pushes it through so it, you know that same hamburger you cut down a tree for is stuck in your gut for anywhere from five days to two weeks and that's freaking disgusting that is unbelievable and it's completely not hygienic and finally maybe from a spiritual point of view I forgot to mention this but seeing the blood the guts the flesh on your plate and then stuffing it into your face is, is a very negative bad bad vibe to be getting um, some I know the American tendency is to hide the meatness you know, you're not allowed to say cow meat like in Chinese we say cow meat new row but in America they hide it you know they they ground it up and they make it look like something else and um, that's even more dangerous because that's a subtle power rather than an overt power and you're taking in the subtle powers of death and evil fear and pain and um, cowardly killing 
I mean, raising an animal in a cage until it gets big and then it can't run anywhere. There's no challenge. There's no there's no game in it. There's nothing to play. They that's even more cowardly than hunting. You know, we all cried when we saw Bambi, but it's even more cowardly what these domesticators of meat do uh, with animals. It's a very bad, very bad vibe, especially when you take it in on a subtle energy. And I sort of appreciate it about Chinese that, yeah, they're eating the meat, but they're admitting it it's meat, and they don't hide that this is a big dead fish. They don't hide that this is a, a leg or this is a, you know, all the bones, the, the skin, all that's still on there. They put it on the table and they're like, that's pig meat, you know, or that's fish meat, you know. And they don't have these words like, it's kagu and all of these, you know, beef, pork, and all these separate words to hide it. And let me tell you, the more you hide it, the worse it is, the more it's it's going to shock your system and um, so I, I guess I'm just going to emphasize contrary to some of us in the brotherhood who who sort of downplay it I'm going to emphasize a vegetarian lifestyle uh, if you are having a trouble you know switching I'll do one kind get rid of one kind of meat to the next kind of meat until you're done if you have energy problems or you know, weirdness adjusting to a vegetarian diet, uh, I can recommend drinking your own piss. And I know that people think that's dirty, but look it up. There's a PDF guide on it, um, of course, from a Hindu. It's, it's about Shivambu, which is medicinal urine. Um, it's not just any urine. There's a specific way to do it. And it's sort of um, the way to cure energy problems or problems adjusting to the vegetarian lifestyle, especially if you're just getting into chastity now and you don't have a long history of chastity. So, sorry to make this so long, but amen and om. Begin to piece things together. Now, the number one thing I want to address is, because I've heard this a couple times, is that plants are sentient beings, so don't eat plants. Um, <laughs> Well, the animals eat a lot more plants, and eating the animals equals eating several thousand times more plants. So, in yoga, we apply principles to real life, and the principle is we want to stop killing as much as possible. We want to do things uh, as much as possible in uh, the, the vein of justice so sure we want to eat less plants and the way we do that is by being vegetarian or vegan now the official statistic on that is you eat one hamburger you cut down one tree a good sized tree in the Amazon rainforest 16 of 17 fields in the countryside that you see are used to make grain for animals for meat eaters. So imagine you're in the French countryside and you have 17 fields there. You could literally put trees and forest on 16 of those fields, leave just one of them, and then you would have enough space to produce food for your vegetarian community. Number two major ecological problem is the dumping of waste, guts, and blood into plants or sentient beings too. Um, killing plants to eat them is murder. I've heard uh, if you don't kill all the cows for meat, then we'll have too many cows and it'll be anarchy. Um, I've heard, oh, you'll die of protein deficiency, B12 deficiency. These are some of the more asinine arguments I've heard. I think we need to focus in on the general truths, the general norms of all of history all the way up to now. Our original Bible, our uh, Buddhist scripture, Hindu scripture, 
all of our major gurus and so on. These are our guides for where the truth should be and will be rivers. Where does all that stuff go? People don't talk about it. And ruined air and groundwater. So number two and number three here are combined into one. Uh, I want to ask my sister and everybody else, if it's no big deal, why don't you want to go live next to a slaughterhouse? Why don't you want to go live next to a place that produces animals for meat? Uh, the answer is because you can't dig a well there, you can't drink the water there, you can't breathe the air, the, the rivers are polluted. I think that is a major problem. This is why all of your self-sufficient uh, self-sufficient uh, self temples are vegan because they simply do not have the luxury of polluting their own water and air. They home brothers so vegetarianism I think some people downplay how important it is and many of us are more manly continent strong courageous yogis don't want to look like pussies like hippies manjanas and so this so called tough exterior we want to say oh meat doesn't matter it's okay and um, my sister is fairly Germanic and she's like yeah eating meat doesn't doesn't matter it just doesn't matter that's what she said so um, I've heard some pretty dumb excuses for it too like um, 